Okay, so we'll begin. So um, the last time we looked at uh, fundamental subspaces and uh, we started discussing the rank. Uh, today we will finish the discussion about uh, the rank of a matrix and then move on to the inner product and the Gram-Schmidt uh, orthogonalization process. Okay, so let's continue. So we, have, we were talking about the rank. The basic definition is that the rank of a matrix A is the dimension of the range space of A. And the dimension itself is the number of vectors uh, in a basis for uh, a vector space. And the range space of A is the span of the columns of A, and that is a vector space. And the dimension of that vector space is the rank of a matrix. So the last time we saw that uh, rank is equal to the number of linearly independent columns in A. And there is a remarkable fact, which is that the rank of A equals the rank of A transpose, row rank equals column rank. Then we also said that uh, if you have, if you're given as a linear system of equations, AX equals B, it can have no solution, one solution or infinitely many solutions. And it will have at least one solution if the rank of the augmented matrix AB equals the rank of A. Um, if the rank of the augmented matrix A concatenated with B, is greater than the rank of A, then there is no solution. Then we said that uh, it's possible to find a row reduced echelon form for a matrix. And you do this by um, uh, performing uh, row operations. And these row operations or elementary row operations, uh, there are three of them. The first is to exchange a pair of rows. The second is to multiply a row by a non-zero scalar. And the third is adding a scalar multiple of one row to another row. So none of these operations change the rank. And therefore, if you look at the row reduced echelon form, and um, uh, you can, if you can find out the rank of the row reduced echelon form, then that tells you the rank of the original matrix. And the row reduced echelon form is in such a way that the diagonal uh, entries will be non-zero up to a point, and then you have all zero rows. And uh, the number of non-zero rows in the row reduced echelon form is the rank of the matrix. So it's important to remember that the rank of the matrix is the number of non-zero rows in the row reduced echelon form. I often find students saying that uh, the rank of the matrix is the number of non-zeros in the row reduced echelon form. That is incorrect. It's not the number of non-zero elements in the row reduced echelon form. It is the number of non-zero rows in the row reduced echelon form. Okay, so those were the properties we saw the last time. Now, I did not uh, actually walk you through how to find the row reduced echelon form of a matrix, but I assume that this is something that you have seen in your undergraduate linear algebra. So if you've forgotten how to find the row reduced echelon form of a matrix, you should just practice it. You should look it up and then practice it on one or two matrices to make sure you're aware of how to do it. So we'll continue with these properties. The next property is that uh, if the rank of A is R, then exactly R columns of A are linearly independent. and exactly our rows of A are linearly independent. Also, um, there is an R cross R submatrix of this matrix A, which has a non-zero determinant. So there are two, uh, two keywords that I've dropped here. One is a submatrix and the other is a determinant. 
So the submatrix of a matrix is obtained by, so you pick R rows of the matrix A and you pick R columns of the matrix. When you do this, if you select the elements that are defined by these R rows and R columns, that gives you an R cross R submatrix of the matrix. So for instance, if I take a matrix, one, two, seven, six, two, three, eight, nine, seven, two, one, four. And if I take rows two and three and columns say three and four, then I get a two cross two sub matrix. Eight, one, nine and four. So um, there is an R cross R sub matrix of A with non-zero determinant and determinant is something that I've not defined yet. You might remember it from your undergraduate program, but we will also study it in more detail um, later in the course. But more importantly, and all R plus one cross R plus one sub matrices have zero determinant. Another obvious property is that the rank cannot increase by deleting rows or columns. And similarly, rank cannot decrease by adding rows or columns. OK, because when you add uh, rows or columns, you can only increase the span or the dimension of the span of the columns of the matrix. And so the rank cannot decrease if you add a, a row or a column to the matrix. The next question is, what happens to the rank of a matrix pair of matrices when you add or multiply them? And so there are some inequalities. You, in general, you can't say something. Uh, I mean, you cannot give a universal answer to the rank of a matrix when you add two matrices or you multiply two matrices, but you can give some inequalities. So for example, if I have A in R to the M cross K, and B in R to the K cross N, so that A, B is well defined, A times B, then we have that uh, rank of A plus rank of B minus K is less than or equal to rank of AB is less than or equal to min of rank A, rank B. So in other words, you cannot increase the rank of a matrix by multiplying it by some other matrix B. Its, its rank is at most uh, rank of A. Similarly, you cannot increase the rank of a matrix B by pre-multiplying it by another matrix A. Its rank is at most rank of B. So one other way to see this is that, uh, for example, if, if Bx is equal to 0, then Abx is also obviously equal to 0. So so that any vector which lies in the null space of B also lies in the null space of AB. And so we can say that uh, the dimension of the null space of AB is at least equal to the dimension of the null space of B. 
which implies, remember now the uh, rank nullity theorem, uh, the dimension of the null space of AB and the rank of A should add up to um, uh, the value M or N. Okay, so, um, so that means that the rank of AB is less than or equal to rank of B. Similarly, you can make an argument in terms of uh, if y transpose a equal to 0, then y transpose a b equals 0, and so it goes. The Another uh, well-known inequality is uh, the Sylvester inequality. which says that this is about adding matrices. So it says that mod of rank A minus rank B is less than or equal to rank of A plus B is less than or equal to rank A plus rank B. See, one way to get some intuition into these inequalities is to try to think about simple matrices that you can construct where each of these inequalities are satisfied with equality. So, for example, this inequality, this first part, this is satisfied with equality if and only if um, range space of A uh, intersection range space of B is the zero vector and uh, range space of A transpose or the call uh, or the range of the rows of A intersection span of the columns of B transpose is the zero vector. Now, the Sylvester inequality is actually the special case of another inequality. Um, uh, okay, there's one other small remark I want to make. This, this inequality here, rank of A plus B is less than or equal to rank A plus rank B. Um, I'll, 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 I'll draw a star here and make a remark on it. So this is called the sub-additivity sub property. Property of the rank. And uh, the consequence of this is that uh, any rank K matrix can be written as the sum of K rank 1 matrices, but not fewer. So you can't write a K rank K matrix as the sum of fewer than K rank one matrices. So this, uh, as I was about, I was going to say, this silver uh, Sylvester inequality is a special case of uh, more general inequality called Frobenius inequality. which says that if you have A in R to the M cross K, 
and b in r to the k cross p and c in r to the p cross n then rank of a b plus rank of b c is less than or equal to rank of p plus rank of a b c with equality if and only if there exist matrices x and y of appropriate dimension such that b can be written as b c x plus y a b okay i'm just stating these inequalities i'm not yet sure in fact whether we'll use them or not uh, but these are some basic uh, rank inequalities that uh, that exist and um, um, it's uh, it's just good to know i'm not proving these because uh, it will detract from getting to the core material of this course um, but for now uh, i just want to state some of these basic results that are known about the rank so specifically i've highlighted two results one to do with the product of matrices the other to do with the sum of matrices and then this more general result called the frobenius inequality which involves three matrices so let me maybe do the following this thing doesn't have a name so i'll just say rank of the sum e m by n of course see there is also a notational thing here r to the m by n here the definitions of ab are different both are m by n matrices whereas here um, a is of size m by k and b is of size k by n only then is ab actually defined then this is called the sylvester Okay, um, just um, one or two more properties. Um, one is that uh, uh, rank of A is unchanged by left or right multiplication. by a full rank matrix okay you cannot decrease the rank nor can you increase the rank by left or right multiplication of course you cannot increase the rank we've already seen that rank of ab is less than or equal to min of rank a and rank b but uh, you cannot decrease the rank by left or right multiplication by a full rank matrix um and another uh, property which is something i already alluded to when i talked about sub subadditivity is that yes, uh, sir, and, sir. yes go yes, ahead please uh, sir full rank matrix means number of rows equal to number of columns equal to rank right no no full rank no. matrix uh, so uh, let me clarify that right. right. yes. so i actually but, said that in the previous class So, A in R to the M by N as full rank. If yeah. 
if rank of A is less than min of M N. Then it is rank deficient. Exactly. So A is said to be rank deficient. OK, um, the other point I want to make is that uh, any A belonging to R to the M by N uh, of rank one can be written X A is equal to X Y transpose where X is in R to the M and Y is in R to the N. <coughs> so related to this note that if I have X in R to the M and Y in R to the N and I write construct a matrix X Y transpose, it doesn't matter which X and which Y I take. If X and Y are non-zero, then x y transpose is always of rank one. OK. So um, one way to see that is when I do x y transpose, um, x is a column vector and by multiplying by y transpose, well, all I'm doing is repeating this column x multiple times, in fact, n times, and each time I'm multiplying that column by the corresponding coefficient of y and I'm putting to putting them together as a matrix. So all the columns of A are linearly dependent and there is only one linearly independent column. 